The fourth International Super Symposium was held in late February in 2013 in Aachen, Germany. This year's Super Symposium was entitled New Horizons for Super, Risk Stratification, Organ Dysfunction and Relevance for Specific Diseases. Almost 100 researchers from all over the world met to discuss the potential use of the prognostic biomarker Super. The symposium was hosted by Professor Frank Tacker and Dr. Alexander Koch from Aachen University Hospital. Um, good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you all for coming to the fourth Super Symposium. The talk started with insights into superbiology and pathology with a state-of-the-art lecture given by Professor Joachim Reiser from Chicago on the causative effects of super in kidney diseases. At 2 nanogram, we see an explosion of activation. The presentation from uh, Reiser when it comes to uh, chronic kidney injury and indeed the mechanisms behind that we need to look upon if it also relates to acute illness and acute kidney injury. This was followed by an overview on super and kidney diseases, was caused by liver diseases, was distinguished prognosis or and finally, in pulmonary diseases. The overviews were followed by presentations on exciting new data on super in liver cirrhosis. Where does super come from? How is it regulated? What is its prognostic relevance? and a prolonged QT interval in New data on the role of SUPA in low-grade inflammation, atherosclerosis and lifestyle diseases were presented super and discussed. Been done in the Viragate Cycling Laboratory. Risk stratifying a general population and then offering intervention. And approximately half of the attendees had their blood drawn for SUPA measurement. Within the field of SUPAR and sepsis, Chief Physician Jerky Tenhanen gave an overview on the large amount of data published within the last year. There are no, uh, say, targeting treatments to sepsis as uh, activated... By the end of day one, new data on SUPAR and its prognostic value in inflammatory and infectious diseases and sepsis were presented. And the usefulness of SUPAR in risk stratification of patients admitted to the emergency department were discussed. So this is a higher frequency that we see um, and trauma is not that different, maybe, from um, uh, some of these situations. On day two, the researchers presented data and discussed how biomarkers may aid in clinical decision-making, in particular in sepsis. Um, and the field you're touching, like uh, emergency room medicine, might be more attractive for biomarker research. I agree. Cardiology. So it's a very clear imagination of where our cutoff is going to be. Kidney failure. That I presented here are more for liver failure. You don't want to treat the patients that will survive anyway. Example from our daily clinic. And finally, in cancer. The last session gave insight into the use of SUPAR as a marker of triaging in the emergency department. Is critically ill or not? But if you just go into Danish. Uh, Katia Donadello closed the symposium with a presentation on the potential use of SUPAR in the intensive care unit. In the complexity of the ICU, it seems that SUPAR is able to highlight the severity of the patients that are present in our cohort. There are several highlights. I think when you look at uh, the different presentations, uh, some presentations were really excellent because of the data that were new and fresh and showing uh, uh, new uh, insights in how SUPAR might uh, uh, affect, for instance, immune system and uh, disease development and so on. It's been very successful for us, uh, very exciting and interesting and stimulating. I think it has been really fantastic and amazing experience. It has been a lot of new data and they have really uh, supported that we have a, a, a big chance to do something positive with this biomarker. It's new ideas, new people, new contacts and that's what these conferences are all about. And I think the robustness of the data is increasing over the last years, which is excellent. Uh, second, because uh, most of us agree on how we should continue from here, doing other types of studies, not only epidemiology studies, but also intervention studies, uh, maybe not only thinking as SUPAR as the only biomarker to test, but to look at combination of biomarkers. Um, and 
and uh, looking in different patient groups and having uh, not only mortality as an endpoint. For instance, is SUPAR really helping clinicians in the decision they take? When it comes to mechanisms, hopefully we find something uh, in critical illness as well, find the mechanisms and then have interventions, ultimately. I think that at the end of the two days, uh, the ideas are quite uh, pushed forward in order to clearly know what we have, uh, what we need and what we should do. I think we can help patients coming to the emergency room and, and triaging them, finding those who have a high sofa, maybe get them quickly to the uh, ICU, we see some really nice data in the ICU, we need to quickly start up the antibiotic treatment. On the other hand, we also have seen that those with low SUBA have a, a, a very good Thank prognosis. You. Maybe we can send them home quickly, and uh, so we can use the time and save for those who have a high SUBA. There is a need to um, try to combine SUBA with something else in order to make it stronger. That we need to implement the use of SUBA in the emergency department in order to try to better triage patients there? A lot of new ideas that developed throughout the meeting. Yeah, so I had a great time, it was fantastic uh, having the symposium here and I enjoyed it very much. So uh, everybody this see, who sees this, come to Amsterdam next year and uh, we will make you very happy with uh, good scientific presentations and a lot of fun. So see you in Amsterdam in 2014. Yeah.